So, this is it. Tonight, a singularly unique moment in American history and perhaps one of the most important of Vice President Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. Because in a matter of hours, exactly 100 days since President Joe Biden bowed out of the race, propelling Kamala Harris to the top of the ticket, she will deliver to the nation what amounts to her closing message. One that will, over the next seven days, spread to every corner of every battleground state and beyond. One that we understand will be optimistic, hopeful, and future-focused. One that will lay out in stark terms two different visions of America, where Harris will ask voters to turn the page on Donald Trump. So here's what we're hearing today. First, 20,000 people was the attendance number that they expected and planned for. Then it got bumped up to 40,000 people they were expecting, by far the largest rally of Harris's presidential campaign. The latest, Metropolitan Police in Washington, D.C., suggests that 52,000 people could be in attendance tonight. An exact match, the exact same number of people the capacity crowd at last night's Game 3 of the World Series. Because it's not just what the vice president is saying to the country or to whom she's saying it. It's where she says it. She's going to say it near the National Mall in Washington, D.C., at the eclipse to be, at the ellipse to be exact. It is the very literal scene of the crime where her opponent, Donald Trump, summoned a mob, assembled that mob, and then lit the flame of the attack of January 6th. It was something the vice president brought up in her address at the Democratic National Convention. Donald Trump tried to throw away your votes. When he failed, he sent an armed mob to the United States Capitol where they assaulted law enforcement officers. When politicians in his own party begged him to call off the mob, and send help. He did the opposite. He fanned the flames. Just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails. And how he would use the immense powers of the presidency of the United States. Now, in our very first presidential election day since that assault nearly four years ago, the nation will bear witness to Kamala Harris's big tent coalition, one that is built up and bursting at the seams with allies, old and new, traditional and rather unconventional, united by a single purpose, the preservation of our very democracy as we know it. Even at this late hour, new voices are flocking to that purpose and her campaign. They include Barbara Pierce Bush. She is the daughter of former President George W. Bush. She has endorsed Kamala Harris for president. Bush said she spent part of her weekend campaigning on behalf of the vice president. For now, though, there's no looking away from that bright national spotlight. Once again, trained on the ellipse in our nation's capital, on an assembled crowd, one that is not looking to disrupt democracy this time, but to save it. In just the last few moments, right before we came on the air, NBC News obtained our first excerpts of the vice president's speech. Here's some of what Kamala Harris is expected to say later this evening. Quote, Donald Trump has told us his priorities for a second term. He has an enemies list of people he intends to prosecute. He says one of his highest priorities is to set free the violent extremists who assaulted those law enforcement officers on January 6th. Donald Trump intends to use the United States military against American citizens who simply disagree with him. People he calls, quote, the enemy from within. This is not a candidate for president who is thinking about how to make your life better. This is someone who is unstable, obsessed with revenge, consumed with grievance, and out for unchecked power. Donald Trump has spent a decade trying to keep the American people divided and afraid of each other. That's who he is. But America, I'm here to say tonight, that is not who we are. That is where we start today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. NBC News correspondent Amy Shalcinder is in Washington ahead of Vice President 
Harris's speech tonight. Also joining us, the former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey, and former Capitol Police officer and author of Standing My Ground, Harry Dunn's here. And with me at the table for the whole hour, Harris campaign surrogate, the author of I Have Something to Tell You, our friend Chastin Buttigieg, backed by popular demand. He was in Battleground, Michigan late last night. He'll tell us what he's seeing and hearing. Yamiche, I start with you and your reporting on tonight's address. Well, from what I can hear and from what I can tell, Vice President Harris is both trying to do two things. She's trying to really lay out her vision, which her campaign tells me is going to be optimistic. It's going to be upbeat. But she's also trying to underscore what she sees as the danger of a second Trump presidency. And that's where you see her, of course, using this location to make the symbolic uh, point here that Donald Trump would put himself over the country because she will be standing at the ellipse, which is really the backyard of the White House where, of course, Donald Trump stood on January 6th just a few moments before his supporters attacked the U.S. Capitol and broke in, which, of course, is the January 6th riot that has now become infamous in U.S. history. So she is really going to be talking about her to-do list, campaign officials tell me. That means talking about helping the economy, lowering costs for Americans. It's also going to mean talking about rolling back abortion bans and creating more housing for Americans. But she really wants to underscore the point that Donald Trump is a singularly dangerous figure and that if reelected, he would be more unhinged, more unchecked than the first time around, and that he could really undo the principles of America. And I think you just talked about those speech excerpts, but I think we have to underline some parts of it because she says at one point, um, and I think it really stood out to me, uh, she said, um, Donald Trump has in mind more chaos, more division. She also talks about that, the fact that she believes Donald Trump intends to use the United States military against American citizens who simply disagree with him. He also says, she also says he is not trying to make your life better. And then she goes on to say, I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to make your lives better. So she's really both trying to do these two things because you can see why this would be a dark speech, but because she'd be talking about reliving January 6th, but her campaign really wants to underscore the part that she's also going to be talking about what she wants to do if she was elected as President Harris. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how she has those two things. We're expecting about 20,000, possibly more people here. The permit application has 40,000 people that they're expecting. And I should tell you, I've been standing out here all day. The line is just getting longer and longer. And you can see just behind me, there are security barricades that went up with people getting ready for what is going to be this big event.